Welcome. Hope you're safe and well. Today, I thought we'd try a fun experimental exercise in mark making using non-conventional painting tools and my favorite non-conventional art medium. If you're already subscribed to my YouTube channel, you'll have most probably seen me painting with coffee before. I'm going to start with a quick recap, especially for the benefit of those who are new to using coffee as an art medium. So the first thing you're going to need for this activity is, of course, instant coffee granules. It does need to be instant coffee. However strong you make real coffee, you're never going to get that intensity of pigment that you need for painting with. You're going to need hot water, not a great deal of it, and some sort of palette. This is an old ice cream tub or similar sort of thing. It has a flat bottom. It also has a flat lid. Both of those are going to be useful for mixing things around. What doesn't work is a sort of watercolour style palette where you've got a, a, a sort of curved shallow recess because your tools that we'll come onto later are not likely to be able to scrape your pigment out of that. So what we're going to do, you want a fair bit of this. So I'm going to take some of the coffee granules, teaspoon. Now I'm not going to pour a lot of water into here. Just a few drops, really. And now let's mix this to a fine paste. We're going to mix it as finely as well as we can. We can always water it down to make it runnier, but we want to start with it as thick as we possibly can. So now we've got our coffee paste, our pigment, all ready for painting with, we need something to paint onto. I'm a big fan of upcycling existing materials that you've already got lying around at home. So have a rummage. Things like old cereal packets, for example, can be quite nice to paint onto because they're quite firm, quite substantial. Some of them are greyish in colour on the back, some tend to be quite dark. These are obviously going to be a lot less of a contrast with coffee painting, but we'll try them even so. Bits of old packaging, old cards, cartridge paper, graph paper, old office files, stationery, dividers, things like that. These are just off cuts as well. If you've got off cuts of anything, hang on to them because they'll be useful for experimenting them. Or you might choose to be inspired by my snail mail film from a few months back, you might want to paint onto envelopes. We've got new envelopes, old envelopes that we can recycle, recreate something and, and send those. Of course, if you've got real watercolour paper, feel free to use that. This is obviously designed to take a lot of fluid. But in the spirit of lockdown, I'm going to demonstrate on upcycled and recycled materials. A water pot is going to be useful for washing out your tools, so we'll put that to one side. Lastly, you're going to need a variety of mark making tools. You could use a fairly conventional tool like a paintbrush, but I'll be very interested to see what non-conventional tools you can think of for painting and printing. The whole idea of mark making tools is largely inspired by my experiments with palette knives. So let's start by looking at some real purpose made palette knives. Think about what makes them special for art and why we might use them. If you've ever been to one of my palette knife workshops, you'll know that I've quite an array of these tools. Here's just a tip of the iceberg. And you can begin to see the range of different sizes, different shapes, different styles. So we've got very small ones, medium, got really large ones, straight edged ones versus round edged, very narrow versus broad. You've also got what I might call 
novelty knives, which you won't find in standard art shops. Just to be clear, these are not cutting knives. They do not have sharp edges. Having said that, just be a little bit careful of any rough edges or nasty corners. Most importantly, notice how flexible these blades are. That's something we will need to look for in any palette knife substitute. They don't need to make boingy noises, but it's great fun if they do. Anyway, I'm assuming that you don't actually have any palette knives at home. The reason we're looking at them closely is to begin to think about what other tools we might discover around the home that have similar properties. We're going to look for substitute DIY palette knives. To put it another way, think about what you have at home that could be used for interesting mark making. Here are a few of the items that I've found. You might well discover others. If so, I'll be very interested to hear. So let's put these to one side and think about what substitutes we might find for them. A lot of artists will recommend using old credit cards chopped up to make custom palette knives, which is fine. But I'd particularly recommend using old store cards, of which these are all examples, because they don't have a series of raised numbers on the surface. Let's see, what else have we got here? We've got mostly plastic items, which are, by their very nature, flexible. Just be aware that some of them are quite brittle. <laughs> so we've got cutlery, plastic forks, plastic knives. The knives tend to be just that little bit serrated, which might be useful. Plastic combs, plastic drinking straws kitchen spatulas, spoons, of course very different shape again, similarly, glue spreaders and again you can see that's actually got a handle which is quite useful for what we're doing, uh, toothbrushes, you might have seen me use this before in my snail mail film which is a swan's feather that I've slit into a pen nib and then of course there are things like sponges which are very interesting mark making tools we've got these which we were looking at earlier store cards that have been chopped up just with a pair of shears into interesting shapes we'll come on to how we can use those later on as well little bits of chain that's actually the binder off uh, an old sketch pad, even an old kitchen scourer, who knows, we might make use of that. So once you've been around the house to look for items that have interesting mark making potential, we're going to start experimenting with the coffee. To begin with, I'm going to use some of these offcuts just to experiment on. Now we want to find out what each of these tools can do so that we're familiar with it. Where should we start? Let's start with a glue spreader. So I'm going to dip it into our inkwell, if you like. Let's see. Now, if we just simply place that on here, we can make some very, very thin lines. And of course, your, your ink is going to run out quite quickly, so you need to replenish it. We can take that for a walk. Now that's a sort of a, a ripple motion, which is going to be useful. Whatever tools you have available, you're going to experiment to see what marks you can create. It's worth spending some time on this stage. The other thing we can do with an object like this is this sort of movement. You can also create some lovely sort of dripped marks. Part of the point of doing these uh, experiments is to set you thinking of things that you might do with them. So 
just doing those is sort of setting me off thinking of possibly octopuses, possibly um, dandelions, clocks, that sort of thing. There's all sorts of things that might then begin to occur to you. Now let's take something quite different. And let's see what happens. And you can see there are quite interesting effects using a comb. You can imagine how long that might take you to, to paint with a brush. <laughs> Always clean your tools when you finish with them. When you're swapping between tools, make sure you clean them. If you need to stick them in some water first, do that. Now this is still quite wet, so just be careful of messing it up. What else should we have? Um, let's, let's use the fork. So again, we're going to dip that into the coffee. Now with, with, with forks, we can obviously print quite neatly. Or we can use them more as a sort of uh, pulling around tool. To create all sorts of interesting forms. Let's see what the spoon does. Okay, we can of course use the spoon quite neatly to pour a slightly larger amount of the pigment onto the paper for a start. Let's just start by doing that and we can use it to smooth in slightly unexpected ways. You wouldn't get this with some of the other tools that you're using. This is where the experimenting phase is absolutely crucial. Okay, I'm now thinking of seahorses and that's purely inspired by these little experiments that we're doing. A sponge is quite a nice tool for possibly also mopping up excess, transferring it around. You can of course get just a lovely effect by dripping coffee. Some of us do this all the time by accident, <laughs> of course. All right, now let's take bit of chain and you can begin to see what lovely effects you're going to get a little bit more experimenting. Let's see what happens with this thing. Uh, let's just hook that together. And again, just dipping it in there. And now that's quite neat, <laughs> quite unexpected. Now the, the cards that we looked at earlier. Now, if you've managed to chop one of these up into some interesting shapes, which are, let me just show you, um, these are sort of, as you can see, at least inspired by the shape of a palette knife. The angles are meant to roughly correspond with that. So it's not just completely random, those shapes, but um, you can obviously make these up, make your custom shapes. Let's start with one of these and we can, again, we can place it into here, dip it into there. So you're just getting the edge, just going to get coffee along the edge of there. And again, rather like we did with the glue spreader, we can place it 
we can walk with it, take it for a walk, move it, drag it around and you can see the slight imperfections that are going on here which all add to that sort of characteristic feel. Very very similar to a palette knife and we can do something that might make us think of waves. I found this in the kitchen, obviously from some medicine bottle. Now if I place that into the coffee, just going to get coffee around the edges, we can use it again to print. You can see there I've got a film across there so that's actually going to cover the whole thing with coffee. What else haven't we tried? The feather. You might have seen me using this in my snail mail film. All I've done with this is to slit through the, the quill of the feather to create effectively a pen nib. A slight slit down here to be able to take up the ink. And we can of course write with this. Or we can use it to draw with. So you should begin to see what a range of different mark making abilities we have just using these very random objects. For a slightly bigger canvas let's start experimenting. I'm going to use one of the old office divider files. Let's start with the store cards. I haven't got much coffee on here and I'm going to start. You can see that's creating, if you like, a very hazy atmospheric sort of background, just picking up the very slight texture of the substrate. All you're doing is flattening that that blade, let's call it a blade because it's the equivalent of the palette knife. I'm going to flatten it against our canvas and we're making little circular movements to pick up that texture. It's a very organic hit and miss sort of texture. Let's use a slightly longer one. Again, I'm just dipping that into the coffee and let's use that to print some lines. And we can use it to drag that paint around. If you're using cut up store cards, be aware that you've got different lengths to work with. So always choose the length that you actually want. quite like the drips being quite random. They're certainly authentic. Now we can add more pigment where we want it to be darker. So you can almost you can literally sort of pour it on if you want to make it really dark just there for example. So that it becomes much more of a contrast with this background, which isn't white in itself. So just want a little bit more of a contrast. I feel like adding a few more drips. 
for good measure. Now, what we have? Let's have the fork just to scratch back into the the pigment for a little bit. You might even possibly want the paint deliberately to run a little bit. Think about which way you want it to run.
you've enjoyed these brief insights on the creative process and feel inspired to have a go yourself. I look forward to seeing what you get up to. If you haven't already done so, please click subscribe below for free updates about upcoming films. If you click the little bell icon on my channel page, you'll be notified every time I post up a new video. Many thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Stay safe, stay creative.